I bid you welcome, or welcome back. It's already September, time to finish off that Halloween project I left unfinished last year and uh, make it really quick because it's already time for me to work on the next one. I made two videos about my 2023 Halloween project. I followed a prompt list named Meb's Drawlobin Club created by Meb Graves. I have attended the challenge every year since 2020. In 2023 I turned every prompt into a tarot card and I made two videos about that whole process and I also made a joke about only editing them together and making the third video of the project during the summer. Yeah, it's September now. <laughs> but it is done and you're watching the video about it. It's the second half of September by the time I got to recording this voiceover. But you know, I was uh, doing very important stuff like... Like instead of doing actually important things, I did a bunch of uh, random ballpoint pen drawings that are so horrendous upon second viewing they are uh, in this uh, superposition where all three of them are equally worse than the other two. But fear no more because today we conclude that series. This is the video about making the giant piece and combining them alone took me about 16 hours which was at least three or four hours longer because of technical issues. You know Krita runs amazingly in general unless you have a 12k by 6k canvas or some other what the are you doing tier activity but more about those tech issues later making the cards themselves according to my best estimations took me at least 120 hours plus 5 to 10 hours per video the 16 i spent on the final edit around uh, around 160 hours for the entire project and it's time to wrap it up with this video really quick rundown in 23 i turned them all into made up tarot cards and you will see me edit them together in this video first time making this challenge i made 23 pieces in 2020 starting from october 1st in 21 i made 30 of them including adding animations to all of them and right now i don't have them anywhere online in high definition i'm working on that alongside with uploading all my pieces in hd in 22 i combined all 31 of them onto one canvas creating my biggest piece of the time and i'm doing the same with the 23 project i will explain what this place actually is but i first need to tell you something i did something dubious to say the least i built the scene in the sims 4 i don't own the game it was a borrowed copy i used i could have done this in blender with free assets or something or just literally with gray boxes wouldn't have made much of a difference but i really wanted to use something that is more grounded in reality and user friendly for me just to slap things down and arrange them in a nice way i don't have a single pixel from the game in the final image i only used it for the perspective and scaling then i did everything else in 2d last time the entire piece had one point perspective so i wanted to do a two point this time meaning that uh, not every geometric item is facing directly towards the viewer and i wanted uh, to place everything in the same physical space and not into this dreamlike collage of many things just existing side by side while i am sitting in the middle there's someone much more important for the story of the place and that is the mud woman talking in front of a map that shows how humans infested the entire earth by this point with the only safe space being antarctica where the location of the hq is marked if we look outside we will see the surrounding area a place covered in snow confirming the location of the piece and we are looking at the place where the monsters and cryptids and other supernatural beings are hiding from humans i need to admit some pieces are tonally less consistent than others my only excuse being well they are sure a diverse group of creatures with many other possibly being around it still suffers a little from a from the piece not having one central focus making it a chaotic mess in endless ways despite this one having a more grounded and complex environment than the previous one that's all the negatives for now and i want to mention some other characters since as i edited this piece together i did end up retouching almost all characters to a degree with some of them having more of that trick. the one to change the most was of course one of my favorite characters i made for the challenge and that is hooves the daughter of krampus who originally didn't have legs despite a huge part of her story being that she does not have hooves because her name was decided before her birth unlike in the 2022 piece i didn't construct the entire scene based on what i want the end result to combine into i did almost all of the pieces before creating the mock-up for the scene but when i decided to put hooves in the front and center being a really eye-catching character she ended up getting that one foot and uh, I really struggled to make that happen but somehow I managed to do it. I still need to do a whole bunch of feet studies in the future. And what is that some yellow rim light? Yes because of Jay. Now I finally decided what to call this character. This might be my oldest original character who I painted three times already plus last time I couldn't find the image 
but that is a photo edit I made back in Halloween 2016 out of totally copyrighted images. I had no idea what copyright was back then and I remade this entire edit in 2022. Now the jack o lantern head on this image is an extra light source that is there to bring different pieces of the scene together. It lights everyone directly around the table, including the table itself, creates a warm glow in the middle of the cold image. And my favorite little part is how toast the jackal op is sitting so close to the table, it obscured some of that light, so only a part of the antlers and the ears are lit by that flame. Edgar Allan Poe, who is posing as a scarecrow and totally not a crucified person on the wall. I just noticed that uh, that is what it looks like out of context when you don't have the wet field from the original piece. I had to do a serious surgery on this person, so the arms align with the room's perspective and I moved both the head and the crow as well, then I overpainted the missing parts. Arguably the most spectacular single character for the piece is the Black Widow, the character originally created by Daniel Sherekin, also known as Borodante, whose web literally connects to multiple parts of the piece, adding a lot of depth and bringing the different little pieces together. There were other things modified like Mudman got a pair of legs, the gravestone was partially overpainted for the perspective, the Night Scout had a lot of overpainting compared to the original, I even accidentally cut off part of Nancy Kepner's wing and I added a dark line there to make it an actual broken wing. I added a banner to the top of the room with a quote on it from American Horror Story Season 4, also known as American Horror Story Freak Show. I won't spoil anything or show clips, there's a point in the story where one of the main characters, a member of the freak show called Jimmy Darling, is having a confrontation with one of the villains of the season. The season's main theme is the life of marginalized groups, with the members of the show being the stand-ins for them in the story, and how different people treat them and their uh, physical deformities for their own gain, and how they get exploited in one way or another by being targets of fear-mongering, shown off to people to turn their morbid curiosity into money, or by being used directly by individuals for their own purposes. In a monologue between uh, one of uh, such villains and Jimmy, he talks about how the freaks will always win, because while others falsely think they can get away with anything, they will be the ones who will always defend each other, since they have no one else to turn to, and the monologue ends with the line, the freaks shall inherit the earth. I mentioned earlier how I had some tech issues, so here's uh, that part of the story. In the 2022 piece, I started by combining the parts of the image and Krita started crashing. So what I did was doing it in four parts, editing only a few characters together at a the time, then editing the four parts together, then painting over what I had for the final details. This time it was a bit more tricky. I managed to put everyone on the piece with only two documents, one for the characters in the front and another one for the characters in the back. Then I used a third document to make the details of the room like the window and the picture frames, the table, the fireplace, the shelves in the front, the texture on the wall, all of those. Then I had a fourth one where I could add effect layers and bloom and the demo version of the light rays coming from the window. So at one point I was working on the same piece in four separate documents at the same time. But it uh, ended up working out with a few crashes along the way with a lot of lag uh, as well of course, but it, it, it worked out in the end. I only ask one thing. If any of you sees me trying to edit something this huge in Krita again, please just break my arm. I mean, don't, I mean, Consider, yeah, that's it. Once everything was on one canvas, I did the effect layers on top, finally, and I should have properly recorded that part. So I darkened everything with a filter layer, then masked out the brighter parts of the image. Then I added a lot of bloom to everything that emits light, like the lamps in the water tube and the head of Jay. Then I added the light coming from the window and masked out some parts of that to make the rays of light prettier. And then we have the final piece.
Before we go, I need to mention two things. Troll of 2024 is coming. I'm already working on it. I already have nine pieces in different amounts of completion. And this year I'm scaling back. So no giant piece, no consistent topic, but I want to make a more enjoyable videos about the individual pieces. I want this to be more personal than before, somewhat more like the 2020 series that I didn't take that seriously and I ended up making some of my favorite pieces from this entire challenge in that year. The other thing is that I spent a lot of time organizing all of my work files because I had everything in endless dump folders going back as long as 2016. I'm making a separate video about that whole topic but I want to say right now once I'm finished I will make all my finished pieces available in one place in high definition as public domain. I will talk about that uh, whole thing in a video. I just wanted to mention it because I've been destroying my brain cells by organizing my files um, that uh, have been in endless dump folders since 2016, but I'm excited about that uh, release that uh, you will get to see soon enough. But for today, I thank you very much for watching. Have a nice day, create something, even if it involves doing a little part of a giant project, you may never know where it can take you. But most importantly, don't forget to have fun by doing that. Farewell. I have a feeling that I managed to accidentally put my voice at the right place while doing this outro. So in case I sound strange through the entire video, uh, that's the reason. <laughs>